the video we are gonna watch been requested uh, by people. Obvious cheater fakes, blindfolded, Super Mario 64 speedrun. I've seen a little bit of uh, actual blindfolded ones, not that much, but a little bit uh, to understand the, the, the concept and the difficulty. Uh, but this is someone that, you know, fakes it. It, it. This is not real. This is not real. And apparently it's going to be more and more absurd uh, the longer we go. But yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, check it out. Despite the immense popularity of Super Mario 64 speedrunning, there is a comparatively small amount of people running the blindfolded categories, a testament to how difficult blindfolded speedrunning really is. And so it was surprising when I was on Twitch this week and was notified of another runner doing blindfolded 16 star runs. Blindfolded runs of Super Mario 64 have recently been made popular by a small but extremely dedicated group of runners. However, there are clear differences between the runs that those already established players have done and the runs that this particular person is completing. The main difference, of course, being that this particular runner is creating fake runs and attempting to pass them off as real. I have here a video of one of these runs, and I aim to show some of the clear discrepancies between this run and the genuine blindfolded runs of SM64 that are out there. When watching this run, it's important to note that the author claims not to have practiced blindfolded speedrunning much at all, and that this is apparently only his third blindfolded run. Alright, I'll already say there, like... I mean, of course, I don't have the same experience as, like, you know, Cheese or Simply or Ponke. Uh, but playing a game like this blindfolded, if you haven't played it much, you're going to get absolutely destroyed, like, hands down. It's not something like, you know, I take an afternoon to practice it. Uh, also, also, like, before we get too deep into this, uh, I really just want to say that people, please do not go and harass this person and whatnot. Uh... Some people ask me to watch this video because some stuff is just very absurd and funny due to it. But of course, it's not okay to do this. But I also want to say that please don't, you know, go out of your way to, like, make this person's life uh, miserable. Uh, that's not what we want. He claims to make up for this with the fact that he's been playing Super Mario 64 for the past three and a half years. However, it should be noted that despite the amount of time he has spent on the game, the best time on a run he has currently submitted is in 1826, a relatively mid-level time for 16 star. I feel like mid-level is actually like very generous. Watching this run very the generous. The streamer had both follow alerts and text to speech alerts on. Let's go. Wait. The streamer had both follow alerts and text to speech alerts on. Let's go. Okay. Thank you for the follow. If you've ever seen a blindfolded speedrun before, you will know that runners pretty much always have these kind of sound alerts turned off. Considering how important sound cues are when you literally can't see, you would think that he would do the same. However, this guy is so good, he apparently doesn't even need clear sound cues to do the run. Yeah. Throughout this run, I mean, he also you can't see, so of course sound is going to be important. Using, except there are multiple problems with what he's saying versus the things he's actually doing. He mainly claims to be using a combination of sound cues and muscle memory for most of his strats. Most speedrunners know, however, that visual cues in particular are just as important as muscle memory in many cases. It's very unrealistic to assume that anyone could just casually do a blindfolded run off of visual muscle memory alone, no matter how long that person has been playing. <laughs> I've, tr I've tried to do stars. I can't do one star blindfolded. Like, even though I've played this game for years and years and years, even trying to do one star blindfolded is insanely difficult. Yeah, but I mean, this guy has uh, three years of experience. Uh, so, I mean, what can simply really say? This other guy, too much experience, right? Blindfolded speedruns often employ what are called normalized strategies. A normalized strategy is any strat that is done in such a way that the outcome is always exactly the same. In Super Mario 64, many of these kinds of strategies can be employed. For example, moving in a cardinal direction on a controller with notches, using two slow walks to ledge grab at the corner of a platform, or punching against a wall to push Mario backwards a fixed distance are all normalized strats. As you can imagine, these kinds of strats are often completely different from the ones you would see in a normal run, and require hundreds of hours Dude, to properly Ooh, that's learn. crazy. And yet this person is claiming to have a 33 minute time after openly admitting to having little to no preparation. Keep that in mind when you look at the so-called blindfolded strats that are claimed to be employed here. Yeah, I mean... Wait, is, is even the world record that fast? I actually don't even know what the world record is for this category, but 33 minutes? That actually might be faster than the real world record, uh, but I, I'm actually not sure. But yeah, good job of like describing like the importance of like having 
you know, very set and consistent strats. Because I mean, if you if you get lost, if you get lost in a game like this, you, I imagine the top runners used to have to go and like actually go and kill themselves, uh, since it's if you get lost, then yeah, you don't know where you are exactly. Wait, is it really that fast a world record, Matt? Here. The run begins in bob -omb Battlefield with behind the Chain Chomps gate. Looking at a legitimate example by Bubzia, you can see that a consistent setup with clear intention is being used in order to get onto the Chain Chomps pole. Note the use of a notched angle and fixed camera in order to guarantee a direct path to the pole from the corner of the gate. Ooh, that's Comparatively, sick. this runner seemed to have absolutely no normalized setup whatsoever. He takes what looks like either an intentional death or a legitimate mistake, and then tries again a second time. This time around, he seems to be using an almost completely different, yet still unnormalized setup to get onto the pole. The unexpected hit that he takes here from the chain chop should have immediately thrown him off, and yet he is somehow still able to turn around and recover. The runner seems to be using intentional mistakes along with fake setups to try to sell the idea that he is actually blindfolded. Many more of these were- Yeah, I, I mean, th that already, that already looks very, very bad. It's like, you know, unexpected things happens and you know exactly still where to go. Come up throughout the run. The huge red flag the already. The run is already off to a suspicious start. However, the first absolutely massive red flag appears in Womp's Fortress when the runner decides to opt for Owlis, a strat usually reserved for sighted runs. It should be noted how much the runner is talking during this very input heavy and spacing dependent section. Did I check for saves? No, because uh, I, I don't I don't save the game. I mean yeah, that looks like very that looks like very mediocre uh, movement when you are not playing blindfolded. Real blindfolded speedrun before knows how quiet runners tend to be during difficult sections. With how much focus and skill are required to complete a blindfolded run, it's an anomaly that this runner with barely any practice is so casually able to do a strat that no other blindfolded runner has attempted. And yet with absolutely no normalized strats, he seems to do everything with some relative ease. Looking at a run that this same runner has done without a blindfold, you can actually see that he can do the exact same movements <laughs> blindfold or not. His muscle memory must really be that good. On his first Oh, uh, it was identical. It was literally identical. Tempt, oh, that's so he's funny. Able to triple jump wall kick up to the floating island without giving himself I also got to say his wall jump timings are very very impressive for not being able to see. I got to say it's very impressive. Also for Aulus for most people, uh it's a wall jump for Aulus uh is not enough to get into the cage. Uh, depending on your strats, you normally uh, you normally want to hit like one of two, maybe one of three frames. You can wall jump on five frames. For my setup, uh, frame two or one. Two, two is the best, then one, then three. For most people, it's two or three. Uh, so, I mean, just getting the wall jump is not even enough to get in in a lot of situations. Uh, yeah, the thing is, it is uh, like uh, text to speech, uh, apparently. So even though he even though he does respond uh, to some stuff, uh, apparently uh, I heard uh, that it's like one bits or ten bits or something like that, and text uh, to speech will be enabled. Self any sort of indication where he is. With absolutely no normalization, he's able to attempt and fail Owlus three times before finally landing it a fourth time. He even comments on the fact that he should probably learn how to use the Owl blindfolded. Maybe I should learn how to just ride the Owl blindfolded. It's anyone's guess why he didn't opt to learn this much more consistent strat in the first place. In the next star, he goes for the traditional cannonless setup that you would normally see in most sighted runs. Once again, looking at a blindfolded version of this strat, there is a clear intention with every input using normalized movements and guaranteed setups. Looking back at this run, however, the movement across the falling bridge and over to the piranha plant is extremely wobbly and very inconsistent. He then lines up next to the plank using these extremely small adjustments that have no audio cues whatsoever. Anyone that runs this game or has even tried this trick before knows that it's pretty precise. The only possible way anyone could do it blindfolded with the movement used here would be if they weren't actually blindfolded at all. And we're instead using yeah, it as I mean, yeah, I, it's just like it's so bad so far. It's so bad so far. Yeah, Aulus, Aulus, uh, I believe it saves around five seconds ish. 
I mean, it depends on how good your movement is as well. So it can be more, it can be less. Uh, but around five. Something like that. Distinctly visual cue. The run only gets more and more suspicious from this point onward. <laughs> Following I, I like how this guy is just like, oh, it's like, it's getting like worse. Uh, off to suspicious start. It's only getting worse from now on. A couple more extremely wonky and unnormalized setups in Cool Cool Mountain. We reach Bowser in the Dark World, the first Bowser stage. Here, only a true gamer such as this man would be able to somehow sidestep this Goomba, quickly make his way up the path, and then do this long jump to the next red, all completely blindfolded and with absolutely no setup necessary. <laughs> Simply amazing. Do you actually have to time that long, long jump? Like, not quite frame perfect, but if you do the long jump a tiny bit too early, you don't even make it to this island. Like, for an inexperienced player, it would be very easy, even watching, uh, to time the long jump too early, because you it's not that big of a margin between, uh, you know, barely reaching and reaching and barely not. I heard you, Goomba. He then punches a Goomba that he claims he heard, even though there is no good way of gauging distance that precise with sound cues in SM64. It would have probably been both faster and safer to just keep walking forward anyway. Notice then the small adjustment he makes in order to be lined up with the final slope. Anyone who is actually blindfolded here would have almost certainly kept holding right with no adjustment. And yet this man somehow knew he was just a little too far down, despite having absolutely no real setup beforehand. If none of this was suspicious enough, then next we have the first Bowser throw. Looking at legitimate runs by Katoon and Bubsia, we can see that a setup is being used to slowly move Bowser into the bomb without That's even so cool. throwing him. For a faster strat, you can also toss him a little earlier with a slower spin, which provides a much larger frame window than normal to hit the throw. It should be noted that there is also a consistent way to throw Bowser at full speed using a combination of pause buffering and a sound cue. When Mario is spinning Bowser, a distinctive whoosh noise will play. This noise will always play whenever Bowser faces north, regardless of the camera angle or Bowser's orientation when grabbing him. Furthermore, the whoosh will make a slightly different sound depending on what frame you pause on. This is the strat- that, That's crazy. That's crazy. I had no idea. I had no idea about that. But I mean, if you're perfect at blindfolded speedruns, I guess stuff like this is not necessary. <laughs> ...that Nabori implements, and it's how he's able to consistently pause buffer a B-press to throw Bowser into the bomb. How that, that's actually so impressive. That, that's impressive. Also, the fact that people, like, figure out these, these things. But yeah, I mean, this guy on this third run... Too good. However, it seems like this runner couldn't be bothered to learn any of these strats. He instead opts to throw Bowser in the conventional way, while claiming to also be using a sound cue. Notice, however, that he also opts to turn his camera towards the bomb. As explained, turning the camera during spins does not affect the timing of any audio cues, and so it would be pointless to do this if the runner was truly blindfolded. It's pretty obvious here that he's just turning the camera so he can visually see when to throw. Moving on to basement, we see another series of extremely suspicious and inconsistent setups. In Shifting Sandland, he is somehow able to get the Talon Star using a strategy only viable for visual runs. The amount of adjustment needed to long jump to the Fly Guy and twirl over to Klepto is simply too precise to be done consistently in a blindfolded run. That doesn't stop this guy though. He's able. <laughs> Dude, I, I just gotta say, the, the, I'm not sure what's the most funny. The 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 strats this guy try to do while pretending that he's blindfolded, or the way this fucking guy speaks making the video. I'm not sure what's the most funny. Able to do it first try with no issues. In Hazy Maze Cave, however, he reverts back to setups that might pass as blindfolded to try to further sell the idea that he cannot see. However, the quote-unquote setups he is using make absolutely no sense. On the emergency exit star, he seems to have created some kind of fake counting system involving more unnormalized and inconsistent movements. Okay. Compare this again to Nabori's strat, which uses normalized movements along with the game's fixed camera option for even more consistent angles. Up to this point, the run has been extremely suspect at best. However, what happens in the second half absolutely destroys what little credibility it had in the first <laughs> I mean, does it have any credibility? I feel like th this run lost its credibility in the first, like, 10 seconds. <laughs> place. The last half of this run is so blatantly fake that it makes the previous 20 minutes look completely legit by comparison. And... Yes. 
<laughs> oh, come on, let's go. We now come to MIPS clip. In my opinion, one of the most impressive sections of Blindfolded 16 Star. Successfully doing MIPS clip in a real blindfolded speedrun requires an extremely precise setup involving walking into a corner with the correct camera angle, and then repeatedly re-grabbing MIPS to achieve the correct spacing on the door. This is one of the most difficult and precise sections in the entire run. In the Ooh. castle basement, even the tiniest mistap to the left or right can mess up your- Wait, did he use the, the, the pause run and then to, to get a very, very set the angle there? This is one of the most difficult and precise sections in the entire run. In the castle basement- I mean, th th that was also very impressive. That was very impressive. But yeah, I mean, you can see, you can see like, all the strats the legit runners are doing is like, so pre-planned because they know need to know exactly exactly what's gonna happen uh, i'm i'm impressed by a lot of these threats the tiniest mistap to the left or right can mess up your camera entirely breaking any setup you may have had this runner however throws all of that out what if you don't have any you know setup you just go by feel the window to clip through the basement door he basically just runs straight at it and ends up in the right spot no setup needed <laughs> remember that there are absolutely zero sound cues here there is absolutely no way he can know how close or far away he is from the door because he is using literally no setup here. The exact same is true for his clip through the 30 star door. Once again, with absolutely no discernible audio cues and no real setup whatsoever, he somehow either knows exactly where he is on the door or just gets lucky enough to clip through it after randomly guessing. He spends around 30 seconds here walking back and forth along the door and somehow is able to find the exact right spot to make it through. Somehow, it still gets worse after this. <laughs> At this point, he pretty much goes through the rest of the game without even thinking about what a real blindfolded run should look like. It really looks like he's just gift. Am I gonna do a 16 star blindfolded? I mean, if if he can, you know, do this after only three runs, it can't be that hard, right? Given up on trying to sell the illusion any further. He approaches the submarine in dire dire docks from a seemingly random angle and then tries to make it look like he knows where he is by jumping at it. I slid off something. Wait, what? I mean, he did slide off something, but like... What? That comment is so random to me. And it wouldn't even surprise me if this is brought up, but like... There is nothing else you can slide off on this level. As far as I remember. So it's like... Yeah, like how would you not know? It just makes it such a weird comment. Oh fuck, am I at the submarine? Yes, okay. The fact that he even says this is strange to me. There is literally nothing else in this level that you can slide off. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that, that's what I... So it doesn't really I was make like, wait, what? to act as if he had to figure out what he was sliding on. He needed to make it look like he had some kind of cue to go off of, and then did the absolute bare minimum to try... Wait, how the fuck would you know where you he are? He then approaches the back of the sub as you would in a normal... I mean, sometimes I don't even make it up first try without, like, when direction. I'm playing for real. It should be painfully obvious how bad this looks. A real blindfolded runner would be completely disoriented in this situation, and there is no consistent way you could realistically recover from this. Despite this, he is somehow able to loop back around at the perfect angle and lands back on the fin, once again, with absolutely zero sound cues or any setup. Nothing suspicious to see here. <laughs> that okay, yeah, I gotta say, the way this guy speaks, it's, uh, yeah, that's the most funny part. He did a good job. And there's Fire Sea. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to take and like throw something right now. Uh, I think that might have been the worst one so far. Actually, no, it's been so many bad things that it's impossible. You can make a whole fucking tier list, rank them from like least believable to still unbelievable. Right. So after some more fake strats and piracy, one fake Bowser throw setup, and some suspicious BLJ lineups, we finally come to what manages to be the worst part of the run by far. This run's Bowser in the Sky is pure gold. It contains such a large amount of glaring flaws and inconsistencies that it's insane that anyone could look at it and believe that the person playing could not actually see. He immediately starts the course with, again, completely unnormalized strats, moving through the course with small adjustments that have seemingly no explanation. He then commits what is possibly the most obvious and completely shameless move in the entire run.
No. No. No, 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 no. Oh. I was laughing my ass off when I first saw this. Not only does he somehow know exactly where the one-up box is, but he also knows exactly what direction the one-up will go in once it spawns. No. Something completely determined by RNG. Then after I guess I should ask this guy how to read the RNG. It seems like I have stuff to learn here. This guy, Dream. I, I gotta hire some professional help to read the RNG. This accurately. Yeah, it's it's impressive. What can I say? Chasing it on a moving platform for a completely arbitrary amount of time, he somehow knows exactly when and where to jump to the left. You don't even need to know anything about Super Mario 64 or blindfolded speedrunning to understand that what just happened is completely bullshit. Immediately after skipping the first one up, he messes around on the first rotating elevator, grabbing the next one up in the process. Yes, okay. All clearly a calculated setup. After this, he once again- yeah, I, I can't, I can't take this video. I can't take it. Makes an intentional mistake in order to make people think he's actually blindfolded. I just, I fell off. I can tell I fell off. This is somehow the first and only time in this 40 minute run that he accidentally runs off of a platform. Except immediately after falling off, he somehow also knows to pull back to the right so he doesn't fall all the way down. Only then does he comment that he knows he's fallen down, again with absolutely no discernible sound cues. Following this, he traverses the wooden platforms and tries to go for yet another one up. There should be a life on one of these. He clearly saw this one up with his eyes, but then remembered he was supposed to be blindfolded. <laughs> so he passes it off by acting like he knew there should be a one up there and goes back to grab it. Again, no setup was. Yeah, and also like after after he's on this first platform and then he goes on to, you know, the the moving platform up to the next one, right? Uh and then he's like, oh, it should be, like, somewhere here. Like, if it was an intended strat, if it was an intended believable strat, he would have known, like, on which platform. Like, here he's not even sure which platform it's on, but it's apparently according to his plan to grab it. So ever. Oh, no, yeah. I, I didn't even look at uh, his chat. How the fuck you are you doing this blindfolded? Dude, I really hope, I really hope this is Twitch and Reddit warriors. Uh, no, actually, I, I just want to say that I hope these people are not serious. I hope they are not serious. But the pessimistic side of me tells me that they are dead fucking serious. Ah, got it. Watch now as he somehow knows exactly where... Oh yeah, yeah. Was Oops. No. Runner doing blindfolded 16. No. Where were we? Yeah, I, I was gonna say like yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice the sub exactly sub badge thing. Was. Again, anyone who was. Wait, where were we exactly? Yeah, yeah, here. Ah, got it. Watch now as he somehow knows exactly where he is on the spinning platform and knows exactly where the first pole is. Again, anyone who was actually blindfolded here would have probably just kept holding left and run off. However, this guy is able to make a completely random amount of adjustments to make it onto the pole. He then makes his way to the next pole and grabs the red, which he seems to be using as an audio cue. Okay, I know what pole I'm at. Then, immediately after jumping off of the pole that he knows he was just on, he attempts to use two bob bombs on the next platform to further determine his position. There should be like some bob bombs up. Yes. Okay. This is absolutely pointless, as he had already just verified where he was. All he had to do here was hold forward and he would have reached the next wall. At this point, he once again reiterates the fact that this is only his third blindfolded run ever. This is your second blindfolded run, isn't it? Uh, technically this is my third. Yeah, technically it's his third. Uh, the first one I did was like, I don't know. I don't remember how long it took me. In the last four minutes alone, there have been countless points of extreme suspicion. From the moment he enters the stage to the moment he enters the final pipe, there is almost nothing that could be considered even remotely legitimate. However, the final Bowser throws that he does in the next four minutes are somehow even worse. He begins by grabbing Bowser using the normal visual method. Running around Bowser with a tight enough circle to grab him is something that heavily relies on visual cues to properly do. 
This is why in a real blindfolded run, a setup is used for the first two grabs that involves luring Bowser to a bomb from the edge oh, of the Oh, that's platform. cool. For the final throw. Yeah, that's cool. I was actually curious how they were going to do it, like the actual pro runners. But that's cool, yeah. Bowser goes for his dash attack. But I mean, dude, grabbing Bowser normally, blindfolded, you would have to do it so many fucking times before you can even get it once. But yeah, I mean, this guy can do it consistently. What a guy. Oh, a separate normalized setup is used. And yet, after only one miss, this person is able to grab Bowser in the normal way, no problem. Note that after this first mistake, he does not miss a single tail grab for the rest of the fight. He then winds up for the first throw and misses. Once the throw is missed, Bowser will jump back onto the stage differently depending on where he fell off. Which means that it's gonna be so, so easy to determine exactly where he's gonna come up, right? Uh, Pantrafoss, thank you for six months. There isn't a very good way to account for this, so the only real backup is to run off and try again from the beginning. But this guy doesn't do that. He instead goes for a re-grab and gets it, again with no setup and no sound cues. He hits the throw on his Muscle second memory. try, Muscle again memory. using the normal visual method of throwing. During his second throw, he stops and talks for about 30 seconds to explain how he first learned to speedrun blindfolded. Have you practiced outside of stream while blindfolded? A viewer is asking. Uh, actually not a lot. I feel like if I practice more... Th this proves talent is real, guys. Talent, it's not only real, but it's so much fucking bigger than the talent believers say. This is the biggest proof. This is the biggest proof I've ever seen. I'm a talent believer. After this video, I mean, I could practice this for 10,000 hours. And, you know, I still wouldn't be as good at this as he is. Yeah, he's built different. He has talents. I can't compete with this. More, I'd be a lot better at it. Most of this is just muscle memory and listening to the audio cues. But I've been speedrunning and playing Mario. Yeah, City muscle Ford memory, for dude. Three and a half years solid. Wait, did they say eight and a half? Mario 64 for three and a half years. Oh, three. Solid. Okay, okay. Because I was like, wait, didn't they mention like three and a half years earlier? Well, but yeah, no, I heard wrong. So like, I could. And I, I well, during streams. I... Dude, he has been spinning this Bowser for like fucking fifteen minutes. I I'll be lost. I'll be lost even if I had my eyes open. I would. I would like, because I knew before I did my first blind run, blindfolded run stream, I would test myself by just like looking at my other monitor or just looking at like away from the TV and doing the run. He is once again constantly talking during a section that should take an extreme amount of focus to execute. And yet he still figures out exactly when he needs to throw Bowser. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> After messing fuck around for yeah. another minute, he then gets another re-grab, once again with no setup or any possible audio cues. During the final throw, he turns the camera not once, but twice to visually aim at two separate bombs. Yeah, that's he not gonna reach. He then goes on yet another explanation about that's how not he's reach. able to do Bowser throws the way he's doing them. So, what I'm doing right now, the reason why it's taken me so long to throw him, is because I'm trying to time it based on like where my thumb is on the controller, on the thumbstick. Because that's typically like a right, right around where Mario is, like the direction that he's gonna throw. So I need it to be like, if I think the bomb is where I think it is, if, if the bomb is where I think it is, and I'm looking at it, then. I mean, you are looking at it. Um, Obviously, none of this makes sense in the first place, but he is directly contradicting himself here. Here, he says something vague about using where his thumb is on the stick to know where Bowser is, which already makes no sense on its own. Except he also mentioned in his first Bowser throw that he was using sound cues. I actually forgot that part. It's been so much bullshit in this video that I actually forgot that uh, contradiction. Bowser is a little bit tricky. The sound cues on this is actually kind of hard. Wait, I, I'm not even sure if they showed that, did they? Uh, maybe they saved it. I, I don't remember hearing that, but maybe, maybe it was brought up. But dude, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. Okay. This whole time, he's just been giving fake technical explanations to try to convince his viewers that he actually knows what he's doing. 
except he also misses this throw because he was too far away yeah. to ever hit the bomb in the first place, something he probably should have known whether he could actually see or not. Maybe he's only pretending to be blindfolded so he can hide the fact that he sucks at Bowser throws. <laughs> oh, oh. Fuck, okay. Oh, good, good time. Okay. He eventually does land the last throw, no. luckily avoiding all the fire on the ground and barely avoiding running off the edge. Nothing but pure skill and game sense. After the run is over, he is challenged multiple times by one of the only doubters in his chat. He is asked to verify that he can actually do blindfolded Bowser throws, but refuses to do even the simplest test to prove it. So would you be opposed to doing Bowser in the sky and throws while turned around with a blanket over my head? You'll give me $50 if I do it turned around with a blanket over my head? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh my god. I mean, even, like, right, at least now, his viewers must have been convinced, right? He was taking, like, a, a full minute. It's like, wait, am I gonna do the same thing I just did? And I get $50 for it this time. You know? He has the muscle memory. He has all of it, right? And it's like, now I get paid for doing it. It's like, mm, nah. Nah. I mean, I guess, I guess the explanation is if you're, you know, famous enough, you you can't take such small amounts, can't uh, sell yourself shortly. Despite the glaring flaws in this person's gameplay, he has somehow been able to convince all but a few of his viewers that his blindfolded runs are legit. Messages in his Twitch and Facebook gaming chats show that most of the people watching him are completely convinced that what they're seeing is real. The best I can possibly assume in this situation is that he may actually be doing some of these parts at least partially blindfolded, only peeking through the blindfold whenever he's completely lost or doesn't know what to do. It's either that or the blindfold is just completely see-through, and his only goal during the run is to make it look like he can't actually see. I almost thought this run was a joke, but it's clear from the way he's talking about his gameplay that he's completely serious. I can only speculate on this person's motives for faking these I mean, I will say that if, if you did a fake like a fake uh, blindfolded speedrun as a joke, and it's very, very, very clear that it was a joke. I mean, I think that that could be funny, right? But yeah, I mean, as stated by this, uh, the maker of this video, yeah, that's clearly not the case. Runs, but my best guess is that he's doing it for either the money or the views. It should be noted that during the run, the only way to communicate with him was to donate bits to play a text-to-speech message on stream. Considering the run is fake, this just seems like a scummy way for him to take money from people. But honestly, for only one bit per message, it doesn't really seem that bad. If the amount was any higher, I would probably have a much bigger problem with it. But whatever small amount of money he did collect is probably the least of our worries here. There hasn't been a notable cheating incident in the Mario 64 community for a few years now, so I guess we were about due yeah, for I mean, another one. Yeah, I mean, one bit is basically nothing, this run, so... This person I mean, has not only made a he did not get much out of it, at least. Speed running, ...but has also detracted from the hard work of people who have actually put in the insane amount of time needed to do this for real. This particular run ended with a 42-minute time, however, he claims to have completed a faster time of 33.23, a time which would be considered second place on the current leaderboards. When asked if he will submit the time, however, he claimed that he wants to take first place before he makes any submissions. I trust how- Dude, what a guy. Like, I submitted my runs for 70 star way before I'm first place. I mean, I probably will never even get to first place unless I play for like multiple, multiple, multiple years. But, I mean, what a guy. Can't take less than being first. However, that the mods of the category are smart enough to see that any run he submits will be clearly invalid. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he never even submits a run, because he probably knows that it would never get verified anyway. If you happen to see this guy on Twitch or anywhere else, please just don't interact with him. I've intentionally left his name out of this video, one, because I don't wish for anyone to harass him over this, and two, because I don't believe that any cheater deserves attention past simply being exposed. I want to give a big shout out to both Katoon and Bubsia for their incredible help on this video. They helped to clarify a lot of questions I had about Blindfolded Mario 64, and this video would not have been as comprehensive without their inputs. 
Also thanks to both them and Nabori for allowing me to use their footage for comparisons. I've left links to all of their streams and YouTube channels in the description. Please check all three of them out if you want to see some legitimate blindfolded runs of Mario 64, as well as many other games. These people have genuinely put in the insane amount of time and focus needed to successfully complete these runs for real. They're the ones who truly deserve it. If you please, you can also subscribe to this channel and check me out over on Twitch. My runs aren't quite as cool as these guys yet, but we'll still have some fun. Ah, uh, dude, that, that was crazy. That was crazy. Uh, that was uh, that was a very uh, it was a very funny, funny but tragic video. They did very good explanations. They did very good explanations of everything uh, regarding blindfolded speedruns, how it actually works. Wait, watch. Yeah, okay. Watch the outro. Is it more stuff? Do I think I can do some Bowser throws with a pillow over my face? I mean, but like... <laughs> but like, what would be keeping the pillow on my face? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can turn around. It's not like you can just turn your chair around and then do it. Uh, this guy, he has all the answers. Uh, I guess the pillow, you know, his muscle memory somehow gets lost in the process. I mean, this one was so bad that it's like... I have a hard time to, like, understand how this person thought that this would... Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, was, I had some good laughs, though, so I'll take that. And yeah, shoutouts to uh, the person making this video and to the actual blindfolded uh, speedrunners.